Good day and welcome to this Monday segment of A Week at the Plot. And even though it's pretty grey skies out there today, bright grey, not dull grey, bright grey, it's still pretty humid. I haven't seen any blue skies today whatsoever. But because it rained overnight, which because Richard and I were asleep, we didn't notice, it is pretty humid down here. And it's been spitting and spotting with rain most of this afternoon. It's about four o'clock now. And at one point, I think about half past one, we got quite a, a downper, downburst of, of rain. So yeah, it's, it's pretty humid. Though I'm still gonna be watering the butternut squash and our courgettes and our cucumbers. There is a courgette that I, I want to pick, so I'm going to have to do that. It's gone larger than I would have wanted, but never mind. And yesterday I also decided to harvest the seeds, or most of the dried seeds, from our London Market carrot. So I snipped off the umbellifa seeds that had um, developed and I put them into a brown paper bag. So I'll leave them in that brown paper bag in a dry place for a couple of weeks and then hopefully I'll just be able to rub the, um, the heads between my hands and the seeds will fall into um, a receptacle which is likely to be one of our soup bowls. And then it'll go back into a brown paper envelope for safekeeping and then into the fridge. So yeah, I was pleased to do that yesterday. I did it yesterday mainly because we're due so much rain over the coming days that I didn't want to not harvest them because they're already dried or most of them are already dried, the ones that I picked. And I didn't want them like the beans I spoke about to get wet and wet and wet and then dry again. There's still some seed heads left on the carrot. So after this wet spell has gone, and hopefully we have some drier spells, I'll see whether there's any more there that would be suitable for harvesting. But another thing that I'm going to do is harvest our Love in the Mist because they're sitting at the edge of a bed that we haven't really used. And I'm gonna do exactly the same as I did with the London Market carrot seeds. I'm gonna cut off the seed head and then just let it dry. I think I'm gonna use a receptacle for that. Yeah, I'm going to put the seed heads into here as I cut them and then I'll just let them sort of dry off in here in the shed. They're not wet at the moment, but you know, the whole point about taking them is I don't want them to be wet. So them being sort of pretty dry at the moment after just a brief spout, bout, bout of rain today will be absolutely fine. So let me just go and do that and I'll take you along with me. So these are our Love in the Mist seed heads. You can see they're pretty um, dry and the whole plant is, is dry and not these over here, these are um, fat hen uh, seedlings, but you might be able to spot a few seedlings coming up here from seeds that have already fallen. So maybe I'm a, a bit late in harvesting these, but yeah, I'm still gonna harvest them because I know that there are some seeds inside. Though actually when I look beyond, maybe we'll have a look in a minute, I can see quite a lot of love in the mist seedlings are coming along here. Anyway, got my bowl. Oh yeah, no, there's, there's good seed in there. Be careful not to hit them because the, the sheer act of hitting them could, like I've just done there, could release seeds. Drop two. So those are the seed heads. Oh, there's one there. These are the tiny black seeds. 
they're sort of literally like specks of charcoal but yeah they're they're rather lovely so they're going in there and sometime this week or maybe in a couple of weeks I will no I think these are all pretty dry yeah yeah they all are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take crush these and take the seeds out I think quite a lot of seed has already fallen out so maybe I should have done this a bit earlier but you know what we'll have enough for our own use and our own scattering these are the seedlings that I was looking at but I think they're California poppy I don't think they're love in a mist yeah they've got those sort of little frilly California poppy leaves had to zoom in and I know it's not a very good picture but hopefully you'll get what I mean well look at that a matter of minutes and a little bit of excitement which I'll tell you about in a minute and we have blue skies with gorgeous white clouds it's definitely autumn it's definitely autumn yes a little bit of unexpected excitement I come back to the shed with the seeds and also with a courgette oh, let me just show you that now no I'll show you that in a minute and a plot neighbour came along with their dog Betty so I was cuddling Betty I always do say hello to Betty and we were chatting and then suddenly we both looked up into the skies because we heard a real throttling up of engines and looking up we saw that a plane had obviously aborted its landing at Heathrow I think when it was coming maybe it must have been over Brentford and it aborted the landing and it came over it was literally throttling up its engines it was so loud and going up back into the sky and changed its course from going from Brentford to Heathrow to Brentford and then turning right and coming actually directly over the allotment and that is the first time that either of us who've lived here many years have seen that happen I'm sure there's been aborted landings going into Heathrow before but it's the first time I've ever seen one and it was it was quite exciting and we were pondering does it now have to go all the way out to um, Canary Wharf to then join the queue again or maybe even South End as far as South End to join the queue of Heathrow coming back in and I'm sort of keeping an eye on a patch of sky there because um, I don't really know what 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 brand of plane it was. What do I mean brand? Um, what not make? Um, what airline it was? But I was hoping I might recognise it when it came in. And we were we were saying, you know, maybe the undercarriage didn't go down. Maybe this, maybe that. So, yeah, some excitement. <laughs> Not, I would assume, for the passengers on board. Um, Rich and I have been on an aborted landing a couple of years ago. And, um, yeah, it was sort of quite odd. And uh, we never felt that we turned. It, we, we, it was aborted as we were actually about to land. And then the, the plane took off again. Um, or took off before it landed. And uh, we never felt we turned around to, to come into the airport again. But we must have done anyway yes seed saving so I have been saving a few seeds we're going to have a look at the black chassis scar or chassis black scarlet emperor runner bean seeds in a few days time but seed saving is sort of the name of the game at the moment and usually I would be saving seeds from a host of our tomatoes but because our tomatoes have not done well this year I'm not going to be saving from them there's one tomato that tasted quite amazing and I don't know what variety it was. It was one of the ones that we had sowed, but I'm not sure what variety it was because it didn't look like any of the ones that we, we had sowed. So I'm keeping the seeds from those and they're now on a plate drying out. But I'm also doing that black Croatian one so um that's like black crim um crim black crim black crimean so crim is crimean 
small plane going in now. Um, Crim is Crimean, so black Crim is black Crimean, it comes from Crimea. So, you know, it's all in, in that area and this one I am saving seeds from and then I'll be able to do a comparison next year with black Crim and this black Croatian one that we've got. And I'll do a, a link here to a seed saving video that we've done before because we use the fermentation method and have found that it's worked well for us. Apart from this year where, where you know, it hasn't. But I know that some seeds that I've given to other people of seeds that I saved that we sowed this year, theirs have done better than mine. So I think it was just the time of year I, I, I planted them and that cold, cold weather that we kept on getting at the beginning of the year. Anyway, and two things that I've harvested, let me just show you. Yellow courgette. You can see it's yet flecked, yet flecked yellow with green. Um, not quite sure why that's happened. What I will do, all the other courgettes we've had from it have been absolutely fine. Um, but what I will do, and I do this with all the kirkabits, all the, um, the cucumbers, our courgettes, our squash and our pumpkins that we grow. When I'm preparing them, I will taste a little bit raw. And if they are ever tasting bitter, I will throw them away because um, bitter courgettes and bitter uh, kirkabits, courgettes, cucumbers, squashes, pumpkins, that type of thing. They, they can really not be good for your digestion and they can actually be quite harmful. Um, there is a thought that that a, a really sour um, tasting courgette can actually make your hair fall out. Um, I've, I've read about it, but I haven't seen anyone say that that is exactly the case. And the other thing is, because we grow so many of our, our kirkabits, our squashes, cucumbers, courgettes, I know I've said it three times or four, um, because we grow them in close proximity, we don't save seed from most of them, though I am saving seeds from the cucumbers because I'm hoping that um, as that is a, a smaller flower, much smaller flower than all the others, that um, it will have been pollinated uh, better. Fingers crossed and not cross pollinated. The other huge, huge harvest that we have taken today, it's the biggest aubergine we have ever grown. The biggest we have ever grown. There we are. Enough said, I think. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to carry on doing a few things here, just pottering about, continuing the pottering of yesterday. And then I'll see you again soon for hopefully a less interrupted excitement episode of A Week at the Plot. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. An impromptu video. As you can most probably hear and possibly see, it's raining. And I had a call from the police, the Met Police, a short while ago that um, one of their team was in the area and wanted to just come in and have a chat and look at the sheds that had been broken into and just sort of talk through the, you know, what was what had happened so spent 20 minutes doing that and as we were doing that at the end it started to rain quite heavily so i thought you know what i'll just pop in the shed and have a look at the rain from the door because it is rather lovely it is rather lovely and our neighbors some flowers there and behind there is the is their runner beans um, as I said before, I admire this plot next to us so, so much. I really do. They, they really, oh, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. And, uh, they have said that we could film there at some point. So at some point I'll give you a little tour of their plot. 
<laughs> which, which will be interesting because it's just so fab. But yeah, you know, the police came down, we discussed things and, you know, it's, it's just good to know that our statistics are being noted and, and information is being noted in case anything else happens in the future. So that's good. That's good. So I'm just going to sit here now and watch the rain fall and listen to it patter on the roof. I do need to go home um, and get back to my desk. But yeah, I'm just going to have five minutes here. Sitting, listening to rain patter and watching drops fall from the sky. Bye. It's fair to say we've had lots of rain over the last few days. Last time I was down here was Tuesday, is it Tuesday late afternoon I think? And it was raining then. There were some blue skies and you can just see maybe a little bit of blue sky up there. But the last few days have really been about rain. I mean, these beetroot have loved it. <laughs> they really have. Um, I'm noticing, let's go over there. I'm noticing that these are beginning to sort of swell up quite nicely here. Still maybe golf ball size, but that's fine. Um, but others are definitely larger these went in earlier and this one here certainly ready for picking many here in fact ready for picking which is fine and then what i'm also noticing is quite a lot of tomatoes because of the wet oh sorry banging you there have split look at that ah uh. And that one over there has fallen over. Up here, this one. Oh, I'm really not doing very well today. That one looks like it's about to split. So actually, there's a, a big pick to do. That one's fallen over. Which I need to get on. And look, there's tomato cares needed. But actually, these aren't going to develop, I don't think, now. So best, I think, to cut this down, in fact, so that this bunch here can develop. Because even though there's little ones developing there and developing there, I just don't think we're going to get the weather for them to develop fully. So, yeah. Emptying out trays, as you saw, has been the name of the game today. But actually, the other thing that's been happening is things have just been growing, particularly grass and weeds, really sort of jumping up now. Oh, I must remember to put these two chairs away. Richard doesn't want them at home at the moment. How are these doing in here? Oh, yeah. They've rather loved the rain. Oh, can I open this? Yes, yes, possibly. Yeah. I think I'm 
I think I'm not convinced at the moment about sowing Portuguese cabbage and maybe lettuce in modules. I think they're doing fine, but I'm wondering whether the transplanting process is actually something that is beneficial for them. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look back at other videos to see what the, the state was after so long. I mean, in case of these multi-sown turnips, then of course that's fine. And of course the beetroot we've just seen were multi-sown as well. Let's have a quick look at the lettuce in the poly. These are our lettuce seedlings, which we looked at a short while ago. In the back, we have parsley seedlings. But as you can see here, empty, empty. And guess what that is? Snails, I reckon. I reckon that's snails. I've had a good look underneath in the, um, you know, between the, the module bits of both of these. And I haven't seen any snails, but we know we had germination here. Really good germination. You can see a little bit. Of leaf just there and they have been eaten I don't know I think the sort of year continues doesn't it of challenges and then these are the cuttings or some cuttings I brought back from mum these were the zonal pelagoniums and quite a lot have succumbed that one's got a bit of green on it that's coming but quite a lot have actually succumbed. But we'll have this one, I think, this one, this one, maybe that one. We'll have three or four cuttings, that's fine. With zonal pelagoniums, I've always had more difficulty. I'm still convinced that the pinks, this one here and this one here, are fine. Not sure about these two, but we'll just leave them for the winter. The hot and top figs are loving it. You can see look, that's beautiful new growth there, new growth here. Um, one of the cuttings we took has gone there. That's just a leaf. Um, and you can see that's changed colour. That's basically just rotting away and get rid of that. Um, but yeah, these aren't zonal. These are just bog standard geraniums. And I think those will all survive there. And these at the front, I think, will be fine as well. But yeah, look, it's raining again now. It wasn't raining when we were looking at the tomatoes, but it's raining now. Anyway, I've got another job to do this afternoon. So let me just pop in the shed and I can briefly tell you about that. Well, you can most probably hear the rain on the shed. It's still bright out there, though, yeah, that rain is really coming down. Medium weight rain, <laughs> as, as Vivi pointed out, I said the other day. Yeah, medium weight rain. And even though it's like this, I mean, it's quite apt, really, because, you know, um, our queen died yesterday and today... It feels quite a sombre day generally outside. We've been fine at home doing, you know, things and working. But as I've sort of came out, I feel looking around that, you know, many people are, are sort of quite sombre. And it does feel a bit like that today. So I'm glad that I have another job to do, which is a rather lovely job, even in the rain. So all oh, parakeets... About 12 parakeets just went over very quietly. Didn't make a sound. Um, a few weeks ago, I did the sunflower, the Hanwell sunflower competition judging. And today, in this rain, we're going to be giving out the two prizes. Um, one prize is, not surprisingly, for the uh, taller sunflower. And the other prize is for the largest sunflower head. Now, the largest sunflower head was actually won by my fellow plot holders or just next door here. Um, uh, lovely girls, absolutely fabulous. And they won the largest head. The interesting thing is that by the time I came to measure the heads as part that were part of the competition, growing as part of the competition, 
even though theirs had no petals on it because it had gone over and dried it was still the largest head so they have won that prize which is great and for the next year they get the trophy and this is the trophy they get can you read that um so largest sunflower head so we have two of these one for the taller sunflower and one for the larger sunflower head so um, my um, neighbouring plot holders here, this is going to be theirs in just under an hour's time for the next year. So yeah, rather lovely, rather lovely. It's something that we started doing actually in the first year of the pandemic. So this is now, so we did it in 2020, 21, and this is the third year, 22. And it's great that this year it's two, two sets of people who have never won previously. So that's rather lovely. Anyway, I better spruce myself up. Job done. And get ready to do the presenting because I need to do that, don't I? I need to hold it out like that and then smile and present it. So yeah, I'm going to do that. And as I was doing that, I heard a crack of thunder so who knows we may have thunder and lightning i'm i don't think that's no i don't think that's conductive metal at the bottom so we'll be all right anyway see you very soon bye good day i've been picking tomatoes and a rather large courgette and in fact, i'm going to move that around because there's too many flies around. The, the reason I was saying yesterday I'm going to be picking these is, look, they're, they're splitting. And, of course, this one's split here. Some of them haven't, but an awful lot had. And you can see the flies. So anything that has badly split and split right through to the flesh beneath has actually gone into the compost bin. I'm not going to utilise anything like that, just in case. Some of them also had ground that had splashed up into the split. So, yeah. Um, let me just put these into the shed and cover them. Hopefully you can see over there, quite a few have been picked. There's more of the Brad's Atomic Grape to pick. So I will do that, but I have taken out all of those that have split or picked all of those that have split when i came down this morning i also noticed this more fox activity in here so this is another bed that i'm just going to harvest today i'll leave the carrot in there but i'm going to harvest this bed in fact i'm going to get on and do that now and then we can have a look at what the harvest is like of these potatoes they're all a little bit scabby but you know what i'm not too worried about that um what i have noticed is i stupidly left this bucket with some prunings and stuff in it and for the last three days of course it's been filling up with water and it just stinks and you can see all the flies around so yeah i'm going to give that a good wash um, and turn it upside down to dry but yeah I think um, I mean, just look at the the growth look at the grass that has grown the weeds that have grown however I'm not sure if you can see let's let's go over there that tree honeysuckle is flowering completely at the wrong time of year let's have a closer look I'm not sure if you can see the white flowers against the blue sky but they are absolutely lovely they're quite high up let me see if I can pull this one down a bit oh is that going to focus no is it look isn't that lovely not a very good photo I know or video but it's glorious. Can you see that one? Oh, <laughs> what are you doing, Paul? This is just terrible. 
Oh, but it is, it's just glorious. Glorious, glorious. But I think this needs a really good prune. That was my intention for the winter, but you can see it's flowering right up there. I'm gonna to have to look up cares because I sort of feel it needs to be cut right down to here. There is fresh growth like this coming up. Um, but yeah, it's tree honeysuckles are not something I know a lot about. Well, in fact, they're something I know virtually nothing about. So I'm going to have to look that up. What I've also noticed is, um, oh, where did I see it? Look, that tomato there is even splitting. Oh, dropped it on the floor. It's just because we've had so much rain, the inside has grown far, far quicker than the outside and just split the skin. It really has been the most bizarre year this year in so many ways. Really has been. No more lettuce eaten in the polytunnel, which, you know, that's a good thing. I've had a really good rummage through this bed, putting most of the detritus over there. That will go in the compost bin. And these are the potatoes that I've got out. Quite a, a weight, um, though I'm not going to weigh them. It's about that bucket's about a third full. I mean, not a brilliant harvest, but you know what? I'm pretty happy with that, particularly as we're eating fewer potatoes at the moment. What I sort of did want to show you, let's go over to the other side, is that despite all the rain we have had, and I have to say all the rain we have had, look, this soil, patches of wetness, but basically dry. And then from maybe six inches down, bone dry. Yeah, a bit of glass. No, a bit of plastic. Won't eat that. So yeah, look, there's another little one there. Another little one there. But it just goes to show that even though we've had all of that rain, this bed, which I must admit is really free draining soil, you know it is, is damp maybe in the top four inches, six inches, and then dry from there below. I mean, pretty extraordinary. Yeah, but yeah, happy with those potatoes. I have to say that rummaging around in the compost of that raised bed and harvesting those potatoes has rather cheered me up. I was feeling quite flat when I came down here today. Um, I really was. I think it's just been that week, hasn't it? it? It really has. I mean, from a new prime minister being appointed who, you know, only 0.17% of the population's actually voted for. Um, a Prime Minister that, in my opinion, is going to be far worse than the buffoon that we had before, certainly in terms of um, environment and society as a whole. You know, business, yeah, fine, you know, but no, it's not going to be, her reign is not going to be good for um, for many people, for society and the environment, in my opinion. And then, of course, we lost, we had the reign come to an end of a woman who has given so much to this country. I mean, literally, you know, polar opposites. And um, whether you're a royalist or not, I'm, I'm not, you know, or if you're a Republican, we, we've got to understand the service that, that our Queen gave to the country and to the Commonwealth and the stability and constancy that she, she gave also. 
and then on top of all of that we have had I think it's something like 28 hours of rain over the last three days four days maybe even more and it's just made those tomatoes and a few other things really really grow that courgette you know ridiculous um, in a matter of days and the tomato splitting when I was doing that and seeing that we were throwing into the compost bin um, I think there were 16 Guernsey Island tomatoes there were five black crim there were four Amish paste there were eight Brad's atomic grape you know I was just feeling oh no what a year and I think it has been the most challenging year that I've had um, as a grower I mean I, I really do but there's two choices isn't there there's one where you give up or there's the other one where you review everything and see whether continuing is the right thing for you well, I suppose you do that in both cases don't you because if you want to continue you do if you don't you give up sorry about the flaring I'm not sure why it's flaring today it's that type of week um but yeah I was feeling flat after harvesting those tomatoes yes we've got some really decent tomatoes there yes we've got some tomatoes that have split that I can make into a sauce today but it just feels a really challenging year it really does um but I mean look at the beetroot you know the beetroot are loving this weather they are really growing and they're happy but, you know, then you look at the two types of bed, you know, the beetroot, which is a ground level edge bed. And then you look at the potato bed, which is a raised bed. And you see how dry that compost is in the raised bed and how wet and moist the compost is with the beetroot. You know, it is literally well, not literally chalk and cheese, because if it was literally chalk and cheese, there'd be chalk in one bed and cheese in the other. And so it's not literally. Mm -hmm. um, but you can literally see how dry one bed is, which is a raised bed, compared to an edged ground level bed, which is an awful lot wetter. I haven't shown you, I think I showed you earlier in the week that the beetroot were growing up, you know, really well in that bed. That soil is, is just good and damp and moist and wet and the beetroot are loving it. So there we are. Yeah, the, 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 the potato harvest has sort of rather cheered me up. Um, and not seeing any more lettuce munched on in the polytunnel has also cheered me up. I think I'm going to, oh, it looks so like it's going to rain again. I'm going to leave it here for this week's A Week at the Plot. I want to tidy the shed tomorrow, so I think I'm just going to get on and do that. I'm going to have to bring down Richard's feather duster to take some of the cobwebs away. There's a couple of cobwebs that I'm going to be leaving in the shed because they're still very active cobwebs for spiders. And yeah, I'm going to do that tomorrow. And I don't think you need to see me doing that because you've seen me tidying a shed before and you've seen me tidying a polytunnel before. So, and of course, at the end of the day, I might just stay at home and watch um, Jessica Fletcher emerge she wrote all day. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching this week's A Week at the Plot. I'm having thoughts about how I may change A Week at the Plot a little bit. Um, might do some midweek uploads of segments uh, and then put it all together like I do for a Monday upload. Um, so maybe previewing a few things. But yeah, I don't know. I'm going to think more on that and I'm going to say goodbye. If you've got any ideas, obviously, let me know. Let me know. They won't be uploads every day. Believe me, there won't be uploads every day, so don't suggest that. See you very soon. I am clicking my nails together. Look, why am I doing that? I'm going. Bye.